you know, like I uh, used to be that person that was super small and super lean and did a lot of cardio. I really like that life. And after I'm done with bodybuilding in a few years, I'll probably look a whole lot more like editor Steve than I will anyone else because it's a great way to live. Recently on Instagram, Dr. Spencer Nadalski had made some uh, some comments. He was saying that in my impression, he was trying to say that it was more important to do weights for burning fat or to keep weight off than cardio. Do you agree, disagree? Is that maybe applying to some people and not others? And, and what can you add to that? Yeah. So that's uh, Dr. Spencer Nadolsky, and he's actually in charge of coaching at uh, Renaissance Periodization, our company. And he is a board certified obesity specialist. So his Instagram targets mostly people that are on that much heavier side, struggling to lose weight and to maintain it. So, so morbidly obese, about, like, you know, in life. Oh yeah. in day, okay. Oh. So like you're talking to 600 pounds, 300 really heavy people. 250 plus is okay. Not population. just your average population. This is kind of a special population of people who are really struggling with weight loss. Maybe they're a hundred pounds overweight or more. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. By the way, there was a girl crawling in the back of the screen there and, and <laughs> probably the same one from before you, you got, you got, you got yeah. random women trapped in the back room. There this is it. At, this is at coach <laughs> Greg's place. This is what we do. <laughs> so, so uh, Spencer's target is people who are trying really, really hard for them to lose weight. They're usually very, very overweight, over fat, and they want to do two things. One is lose the weight to begin with. And two is keep it off long-term and general health is their number one goal. So for folks like that, we kind of have this big problem. It's that if you try to do a ton more physical activity of any type, adding physical activity at some point works really great. And the more of it you try to add, the more your body compensates in other ways, the total daily calories you're able to burn is realistically capped at a much lower number than we would think. Now, you can absolutely do more activity and burn more calories. It's just not something you can stack, stack, stack to infinity. It has this sort of curvilinear function where if you burn 2,000 calories per day, getting your burn up to 2,500 is not that tough. You can sustain it. Getting up to 3,000 is tough and your body's going to really start to wave around. Going to 3,500 is going to be really almost unsustainable for everyone. So now that we know there's only so much you can add in activity, the question is what fraction of that should we add in weight training? What fraction should we add in pure cardio, like just riding a bike or something like that? In Because we have a cap. You can't just ride your bike to infinity calories and you can't lift weights to infinity calories. There's a cap. What do we use it for? Well, if you start talking about the costs and benefits of the various cardio versus weights, especially for Spencer's population, we say weights, we mean like circuit training, like do as many bench presses as you can, walk over as fast as you can to the rowing machine, do as many rows as you can for sets of 20, then go to shoulder press, then upright row, then leg press, then leg curl, all in circuit style with 30 seconds rest between each like that's, that's the weight training for that population. So if we look at that kind of resistance training versus just cardio, this resistance training doesn't burn as many calories. It burns a bit fewer, but still kind of a lot because it's a pretty fucking decent workout. And these people are larger, they're over fat. Also, a lot of them aren't in real good shape to do real cardio. So they can't even burn that much with cardio. So cardio still wins on a per calorie basis, not by a ton. So if we just look at that, cardio is better. However, Remember, we're capped anyway, so you can just do a little bit more weight training than the two end up being tied. Then you ask the question of what else are we getting out of cardio? You do get some, some increase in bone density. You do get some increase in muscularity, but the weight training wins on both of those. And weight training raises your lean body mass, gives you a higher ability, small but notable ability to burn fat and to keep the weight off. And it means that if you get to 200 pounds, you can be lean and really healthy if you have more muscle. If you get to 200 pounds and all you did was cardio, you might be 200 pounds, which is great, better than 250, but you're still not very lean and metabolically not as healthy. So over the course of several years, if you do four sessions a week of weights, two sessions a week of cardio versus two sessions a week of weights, four sessions a week of cardio, because weight training is almost as good at cardio within that boundary layer of adding calories, you do weights and you get all these other benefits, increased muscularity, better metabolic health, better bone density, et cetera, et cetera, better physical ability. You're stronger. You look better. Cause you know, when you have 
muscle underneath you're shapelier like you know some people just do cardio like the old 1980s model of weight loss you just do a bunch of cardio jazzercise and then you're like a less fat skinny fat version of what you used mm, to be versus sure. if you do lots of weights maybe you look like ethan Suplee, the guy that like we help lose oh, yeah. a, a bunch of weight like he's fucking jack like i'm pretty sure most people want to look like that versus just like hey you're less fat sweet so at the end of the day it might be a little bit more beneficial in spencer's view to do like four sessions of, of this sort of cardio style weight training a week, two sessions of cardio versus doing two sessions of weight training and four sessions of cardio. Not a huge difference, but that's where he's coming from on that, I think. Okay. Um, okay, sure. So let's apply that to more, let's say the average person that's watching this, maybe they're not as extremely overweight. Maybe they're, you know, 20, 30, 50 pounds overweight, not at like a life changing, like they just want to get leaner. Do you think that for these people or for the long term, if they like, if you ask me, what would be more likely to keep the fat off weights or cardio? Like for me, like even just myself, if I quit lifting weights and I did the bike racing versus the weights, which one's more likely to, to keep me lean? I would argue that the cardio is going to do more than the weights, even though the weights will allow for more muscle, which will build up your metabolism. So you're burning more calories. I feel like the cardio, because you're burning that much more calories, it's going to make it that much easier to stay on a diet. Not only do you have the extra calorie burning, but that, that decrease in appetite during that time, I feel like that can outweigh it. It just becomes easier. If I had to compare like a weightlifter to a cardio athlete, I would say on average, the cardio athletes are leaner than the weightlifting athletes. If we took power lifters or, or bodybuilders in the off season versus your, your marathon riders, your bicycle riders, your swimmers, and so on, I feel like they're a bit leaner, um, which you think for the average person would be more beneficial. If you had to pick one, because we both know you should do both, but like yeah. just to pick one. It kind of depends on what they want. If they want to look really like fucking like stout or really good and they want to be a little bit thicker and eat plenty of food and still be super healthy and lean, I would say more lifting weights and less cardio. If yeah. If you want the food, muscle, for sure, because I'm like, we'll take myself versus my brother, editor, Steve, who's going to watch this. Steve has lost a lot of muscle, but he's leaner than ever because he's riding an hour to two and a half hours a day on average, you know, 10 to 15 hours of cardio a week and hard cardio, like burning 50. 1500 2000 calories a day yeah. he's eating boxes of cereal doesn't care doesn't have to watch his appetite his body fat's under 10 percent. i'm like steve do you have to like watch what you i eat anything i want whenever i want i don't care and i'm leaner and i'm just no there's no worry because in that two hours he's burning almost 2000 calories now that he's in shape versus when we went in for a bike ride like three or four years ago like, let's go for a bike ride I look back, he's exhausted, could even yeah. keep up. Now he's faster than me because yeah. he does it all the time. And he's down to, he's about 154 pounds versus some like 192. Right. So you can see that major difference. So he's lost muscle tissue, which would decrease his BMR, but he's burning that, that what's it called here? EAT, the exercise activity thermogenesis, that, that top hard. component that um, the doctor Spencer Nadalski had for the, the more higher obesity had is only a 5%. I'd say for yeah. my brother, that's probably at 20, 30% every day, if not more. bringing up a huge impact. So for Steve, it's benefited him in terms of burning those calories. And although he is hungrier, he can just eat whatever he wants. And it's yeah. not really quite making up for the amount of calories. You can't make up the 2000 calorie bike ride. It's just fucking impossible. So I would say a really good example is if you want to look, because like Greg, one of the reasons you look the way you do is because you have like a lifetime of weight training under your belt. And that muscle is much. It's already been built. Pain. Right. So and it's, HRT. It's exactly. Well, you know, yeah. yeah. So HRT just keeps you normal and healthy. But like, you know, so I would say that if you want to, for those folks listening who are sort of in this position, if you want to look more like Coach Greg, you do a little bit more lifting, a little less cardio. If you want to look more or be able to have the lifestyle of more of Steve, editor Steve, then you can do more cardio and less weights. And I think that that's, it's, it's just a personal choice, you know. If and even no be, weights, like Steve, if he, you know, he still had the body, like totally. he still would look for a bike racer, they if he entered a bike race and look like you know he would show up and they'd be like, "Who's this 
built dude that's riding a bike, right. even though he hasn't lifted a weight in two years. For sure. So it's one of those, like, do you want to be closer to 160 and super fucking lean and eat a bunch of food, but you, but you have to pay the price with a shitload of cardio? Or do you want to be closer to like 180, 190, still pretty fucking lean, get to eat, you know, still plenty of food, but you don't have to exercise as much. And the lifting is, let's be honest, lifting is just not as hard as cardio. <laughs> Brutal cardio is way harder than lifting. So it's really kind of a personal choice and there's no right answer. You know, like I uh, used to be that person that was super small and super lean and did a lot of cardio. I really like that life. And after I'm done with bodybuilding in a few years, I'll probably look a whole lot more like editor Steve than I will anyone else. Cause it's a great way to live. No correct answers. Again, for people that have been historically very obese, who have trouble getting the weight down, who can only do a certain amount of exercise, a little bit more weight training in the long term probably makes more sense than very little weight training and a ton of cardio. But for other folks, healthy, uh, smaller folks, such as yourself, such as editor Steve, it's really just like, which one do you want? Both are correct answers.